Okay, great. Let's get started. Um, hi, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today. Thank you for continuing to join us on our monthly webinars. And thank you for joining us on a weekend. We know that some of the times are not as convenient for everyone, but since some of our speakers are in different time zones, um, we want to be sure to select a time and date that works best for not only our audience members, but also our speakers that might be um, from different parts of the world. So thank you for uh, being with us today. Um, today's webinar will be on Armenian Bioinformatics Institute, boosting data-driven interdisciplinary research in life sciences. During this lecture, Dr. Lilith Nersisyan will discuss the plan to establish the Armenian Bioinformatics Institute, ABI, as a regional hub for cutting edge research aimed at promoting data-driven studies in biomedicine and biotechnologies with international impact. We are very excited to hear this discussion um, and very excited to have Dr. Lilith Nersisian present today and very grateful as well that she's joining us during this weekend. Um, just a reminder, we will also have a Q&A session towards the end of the webinar. If you have any questions, feel free to type, that, type them into the chat. We will get to them after the webinar has been concluded and Dr. Nersisian will respond to as many questions as time allows. I'd like to introduce our speaker for today. Lilith Nersisian has 10, over 10 years of experience in computational biology and genomics. She has a biology background, holds an MS in biotechnology, and a second MS in computer science. Lilith has completed her PhD in the Institute of Molecular Biology, NAS Armenia, and defended at the University of Leipzig, Germany. Currently, she is a postdoctoral research fellow in computational biology at Karolinska Institutet in Stockholm, Sweden. Lilith is an awardee of prestigious grants in life sciences, such as the Marie Curie Individual Fellowship, the European Molecular Biology Organization, EMBO, Short-Term Fellowship, and has twice been nominated among the most productive scientists of the year by the Science Armenian Bioinformatics Institute. Lilith has been the principal investigator of three research grants and has authored 20 papers in international journals. She has been an adjunct lecturer at the Arme American University of Armenia, AUA, and contributed to the development of the bioinformatics track curricula for the AUA Data Science Bachelor's Program. After completion of her current fellowship at Karolinska Institutet, she will re relocate to Armenia to commit to establishment of, of the Armenian Bioinformatics Institute. With that, I would like to get right into the lecture. If uh, Dr. Nersisian, you are ready, let's, uh, let's begin the discussion. Thanks a lot for uh, the nice introduction, uh, Jen. So I will try to share my screen now. Hopefully you see it in presentation mode. Yes. Okay, so uh, hello everyone and thanks a lot for joining on um, Sunday. Um, it's a um, pleasure to uh, present to you our recent initiative uh, launched uh, and named the Armenian Bioinformatics Institute. And our aim here is to boost data driven into disciplinary research in life sciences, in particular in genomics, uh, drug discovery, biotechnology, ecosystem management, and many more related fields. I will start with um, a small introduction. So now I already had uh, uh, an, a very nice introduction to uh, my background, but I will also uh, present not only myself, but also our uh, board members and uh, the story that connects all of us. So I started my uh, educational uh, path in uh, Armenia and Yerevan State University, where I did my bachelor's in biophysics and I did my bi uh, master's in biotechnology in uh, the National Academy of Sciences of Armenia. And I also completed another master's in computer science in uh, the American University of Armenia. And in 2011, uh, I started uh, working in the group of bioinformatics that was newly established uh, by Professor Arsena Rakelan in the Institute of Molecular Biology. And, um, in 2014, I uh, started pursuing my uh, PhD in uh, this same group. 
At the same time, uh, I also got a couple of um, fellowships to also visit the University of Leipzig, where our um, collaborator um, with whom we are working for um, almost 10 years right now, Professor Hans Binder was working. So Professor Hans Binder is the managing director of the Interdisciplinary Center for Bioinformatics uh, in the University of Leipzig. And um, he has been basically the founder uh, of the field of bioinformatics in Saxony. And um, together with, um, in, in BIG and in collaboration with the University of Leipzig, we were studying different topics in uh, biology and we were developing uh, ma mathematical algorithms and computational methods to, um, to boost our discoveries in these areas. So first, my uh, PhD was about telomere, uh, telomeres, uh, basically the factors that uh, are related to why we age and why we develop cancers. And we also were developing different uh, methodologies to study uh, various disorders uh, in humans, cancers and complex non-infectious diseases. And recently, as um, many, many different labs in the world, uh, our lab has also transitioned to study uh, the SARS-CoV-2 uh, genome and um, they uh, were actually uh, the uh, only, only group to study the different variants that are spread, uh, spread in Armenia right now. Um, I then um, uh, was awarded the Marie Curie uh, Fellowship, uh, individual fellowship to continue my postdoctoral studies uh, in Karolinska Institute in Sweden. And there um, I was uh, working uh, in the group of Vicent Palacciano and uh, mainly my research topic was a bit diverged and I uh, started studying uh, the different microbes. Uh, uh, so microbiome research was my uh, field of specialization, but basically next generation sequencing and um, sequencing technologies uh, were my field of expertise during the last three years here. And of course, uh, we also benefit from um, our connections with Narek Tushunyan, who is uh, from the industry and he's been a computational biologist in uh, successful startups uh, such as Illumina and uh, 10X Genomics right now. So basically with um, these uh, four people, we have established the Armenian Bioinformatics Institutes together with all uh, the people that were uh, involved in the bioinformatics uh, research in Armenia and I will introduce them soon uh, as we uh, go. But first I would like to start with what is bioinformatics. Basically, um, bioinformatics is um, a field that serves to organize, annotate and analyze the data in the most informative and creative manner to study biology and synthesize or modify living matter and organisms for a better world. What you see here is all the different layers of uh, biological information, starting from DNA and proteins that are available in the cells of our bodies, as well as the microbiomes that are uh, living in our cells. And basically we can uh, collect different types of data sets uh, from, all, from all these layers uh, of biological uh, life. And we can also collect imaging data. We can also uh, collect all these types of data sets from all the different organisms. We can also have some health records from uh, wearable devices. Uh, we can also study single organisms uh, or we can study different populations and compare uh, different populations between each other. So there's quite a diversity of the data types that we can analyze. And this is where the bio, uh, field of bioinformatics steps in. Now, what is important to realize is that um, that Technologies have developed so fast, so they have revolutionized the way we do life sciences right now. So all these novel technologies that are in the lab, they allow to produce enormous amounts of data. So right now, as you see, the amount of genomic data, only the genomic data is growing so fast um, that soon it will surpass uh, both the astronomy as well as uh, different uh, social, media, uh, social media and other uh, sectors. So soon we will be talking not about astronomical data, but uh, about genomical data growth. And of course, there is a need to um, try to match this uh, growth potential with new ways to analyze this data. And 
it's not only the amount of data that is uh, a challenge, but it's also the diversity of data. So here you see with different colors, different uh, technologies uh, that allow us to produce different types of data sets from genomics to proteomics and to microbiome. And what you see here is the number of publications that have analyzed these data sets uh, from starting from 2000 to 2021. And what you might appreciate here is that the, compl uh, the complexity of the different data sets analyzed is growing like uh, crazy as well. So there is quite a field of um, creativity, quite a, a creativity potential to analyze these data sets, not only um, one after the other, but also in conjunction and in an integrated manner. And of course, uh, this is important for different uh, aspects of life, like precision medicine, epidemiology, bioengineering, ecosystem management, etc. Bioinformatics is incorporated in almost all um, areas of life sciences right now. And this is the reason that uh, a very recent survey has shown that in academia and in industry, like 50% of positions for bioinformaticians are not fulfilled right now. So there is a really big gap between the amount of data and the amount of specialists that are able to analyze these data sets. And of course, this is a challenge for the world, but also a great window of opportunity. And we think that Armenia should take this opportunity right now. And um, of course, with this in mind, um, 20, 30 years ago already in uh, the US as well as in Europe, many countries have uh, established national bioinformatics infrastructures and institutes. And uh, these uh, infrastructures, they support all the bioinformatics uh, data analysis aspects of life science research and industry in their countries. Um, and these steps are becoming bolder and world bolder. I can bring a recent example um, that um, I faced in Sweden. So there is a new program launched uh, called uh, Data Driven Life Sciences. And there is 300 million euros of uh, funds allocated uh, specifically to create new labs that are driven, uh, led by bioinformatics specialists. And um, this, is, uh, this is only in Sweden. And I'm sure that uh, many people will confirm that this is also the case uh, with such new programs in every different countries. So Armenia should take this opportunity. And this is why we have established the Armenian Bioinformatics Institute. So the institute uh, in its structure uh, will be very similar to any um, research, uh, research institution that we know. So basically it will consist of uh, uh, research labs. Um, some of them will be um, led by uh, scientists who are living in Armenia, but some uh, may also be led by scientists who are uh, spending a part of their time outside of Armenia, but also remotely supervising uh, these labs and spending some of their time in Armenia as well. Of course, we um, are already organizing several activities to engage students and to provide them with all the educational and other backgrounds to uh, have the opportunity to know what bioinformatics is and then um, gain some knowledge to enter into one of these labs and continue their research afterwards. Some of other activities of ABI include uh, establishment of computing resources with all the necessary bioinformatics software and support, as well as establishment of the Armenian Life Bank, which would be um, a database uh, as well as a website where people can um, see what type of data sets are available in Armenia and different, um, produced by different organizations and institutions. And we will also provide different uh, pipelines and web, to, uh, web uh, tools to, uh, for, for scientists to analyze this data and also to explore the data in the most uh, easy and informative manner possible. And of course, the Armenian Bioinformatics Institute will also host a bioinformatic core facility. And um, the function of this core facility will be to support academia and first of all, all the academic organizations in Armenia that uh, need life science uh, uh, bioinformatics support in their research. And uh, the bioinformatics core facility will also have connections with the industry. And of course, the 
final and the long-term aim of uh, the Armenian Bioinformatics Institute is to create a human capital of experts in bioinformatics, which will make it possible for new biotech industries to come to the country, be it estab uh, establishment of their branches in Armenia or establishment of new companies or new startups uh, spinning off of, of the Institute. So basically, we think that by creating the human capital in bioinformatics, we are um, pursuing the necessary step which will make it possible for the biotech, pharma, and biomedical industry to flourish in Armenia as well. And um, the structure of, of the institute is as follows. So in the near term, starting from September, we are planning to open already two research labs. Um, the first lab will be uh, of um, the Professor Hans Binder's lab, our uh, chairman, and uh, the second lab will be my lab as I'm um, relocating to Armenia right now. And um, we are already organizing and are also planning to organize several educational activities um, for stu uh, to engage students and to also provide advanced courses and specialized courses to different to students from different universities of Armenia, and I will take about one of those uh, projects in detail um, soon. And um, the IT resources uh, includes uh, the Armenian Life Bank that I already introduced, establishment of the computing resources and the bioinformatics core. And we are also planning uh, to actually take one of the floors of uh, the Institute of Molecular Biology to renovate it and to have the physical space there for the labs as well as an open space for students to come and learn and uh, with conferences, etc. And it will also be very nice for them to be located in the Institute of Molecular Biology where uh, there are all the different laboratories that uh, will um, give the students the opportunity to see how the data is generated. So what we uh, envision our um, activities will lead to. So in the first year, we are, of course, uh, uniting people around the idea. So uh, our uh, community of experts in biology, bioinformatics, and data science is growing right now. And um, by the time we uh, work for three years, we think that we will um, have the critical mass of people that will allow us to um, have sustainability and we, will, uh, we are planning to have at least six labs already established uh, by this time, the bioinformatics core and a flow of uh, 30 students per year. Um, by the fifth year, we will already have some results that will let us have international visibility. And of course, the final aim by the 10th year, we hope to have the human capital that will attract already the biotech and pharma companies and we will become an essential infrastructure for bioinformatics, not only in the country, but also in the region. So um, I, I have already introduced uh, you the uh, founding uh, team of ABI. And I will also tell that we were very, very uh, happy that in the initial stages of our establishment, many people have uh, joined and supported ABI on voluntary basis, both in the research and training around, but also in fundraising and all the different marketing and other activities possible. And these people are still, uh, they still continue to support us. And um, the a community of experts, as well as the collaborators, they mainly have expertise in uh, the following topics. So first of all, it's genomics for health. So different uh, types of uh, projects are uh, in the human genomics um, realm, but uh, a very nice and interesting project is coming up soon. It is about plant genomics, which has uh, commercialization potential uh, in biotech and in wine industry in Armenia. Uh, we uh, have expertise in drug discovery and epidemiology. Microbiome research is something that is uh, coming very, very soon. And of course, the Armenian Life Bank is the other. A very nice thing that has happened during the last um, five months is the establishment of new connections between supervisors, both from Armenia and from abroad, with several students in Armenia. So here you can see, for example, um, uh, 
postdoc postdoctoral um, researcher in Belgium, Alex Martiros, and she is supervising two uh, students from Yerevan State, uh, Yerevan State University from math department. And um, that connection she uh, actually got from Gitak Club and um, met there at different connections from Austria, uh, from USA, Sweden, and from Armenia with different uh, students from different universities in Armenia. And um, the role, uh, the um, aim of ABI is to increase the amount of such supervisions very, very soon. Right now, there are several people working full time uh, for ABI. Uh, so we have already people who are uh, involved in research and training, and we have a new student. Um, at who is um, pursuing his uh, research with the support of ARPA Institute. And we are also um, have open, we also have open positions for two PhD students and four master's students. There are also people working in um, other supporting aspects and we are uh, currently looking for a few different specialists to join ABI as well. We are partnering with different academic and educational organizations uh, in Armenia, uh, uh, in Sweden, and in Germany. And um, of course, as bioinformatics is an interdisciplinary um, field, we have also data science uh, companies and uh, research labs joining us as consultants. We have uh, computing resources we use from ASNET. Uh, that are uh, maintained by the Institute for Informatics and Automation Problems in Armenia, and we have a partner from um, China biotech uh, industry. Currently, we have um, several donors that have already uh, supported us, including Tashid Medica, ARPA Institute, PMI Project with the Heart, and several uh, private donors. And um, we also work um, to establish connections uh, with the uh, Armenian government and um, to also hopefully get support from them in the future. So I would uh, like to introduce you to all the uh, accomplishments that we have uh, had so far. So we have been established in uh, February, so we don't have a long uh, history yet, but there are several projects that we have already started. Uh, and um, the most uh, exciting project right now is the summer school that we have organized in omics uh, research. This is a very long summer school. It lasts for 11 weeks. And uh, the idea of the summer school is to uh, introduce the students from different backgrounds about, about, uh, about the field of bioinformatics to give them a perspective of what bioinformatics is. And, also to give them skills uh, in molecular biology, in R, R scripting and statistics, as well as sequencing data analysis that will allow them to uh, start their first project in bioinformatics, which in this case is analysis of SARS-CoV-2 genomes. We have mentors from uh, the group of bioinformatics uh, at the Institute of Molecular Biology, Maria and Siraz, who are uh, being mentors to, to the students and also developing the course content. And we also have uh, 35 guest speakers who are joining every day to the school from 11 countries, from Europe, USA, and from Armenia. Um, we got, uh, have received 47 applications to the school and uh, we have selected 19 participants. And Basically, most of them have either biology or medical background, but one third have data science background. So that's a mixture mixture of different um, specializations. And they, have, they are coming from different degree programs, but the majority are bachelor level students and different universities from Armenia. And uh, they also have different uh, programming languages of choice. But the nice thing about uh, this uh, mix is that um, they have peer-to-peer -peer discussions where they easily uh, communicate with complementary skills and teach each other and help each other to gain different um, levels of uh, knowledge in different uh, areas in either molecular biology or data science or programming. So these are, uh, these are the students um, that are uh, physically located in the Institute of Molecular Biology and they are either are engaged in some classical classroom um, lectures with guest speakers or uh, they have this hands-on uh, training series. You can see that they are making some 
um, DNA or some other types of molecules from uh, household materials. And um, they also have office hours and peer-to-peer -peer discussions where uh, a biologist tries to teach uh, biology to data sciences and uh, the other way around. Um, so that was about the summer school. And we also, um, simultaneously, we are organizing weekly meetups where um, the international community of experts, they are uh, sharing their research with each other. And this is very important to have the connection and the network of uh, people uh, of the community and also for the students to hear different uh, topics uh, throughout the year. So we have had 11 uh, meetings um, so far and we will continue these meetups. Of course, we're supporting the students in computing resources and we also have, except for the um, omics school, we also have learning groups in different uh, special uh, selected topics in bioinformatics. Uh, we are supervising students and one of the success stories that I would like to share with you is the recent supervision of um, Narek, who is a computer science student uh, from American University of Armenia. So uh, me and uh, Barteres uh, from uh, the US, we were supervising him to um, find novel biomarkers in uh, the blood plasma. So uh, a, a very hot topic right now, which is termed liquid biopsies. And um, Nalek has uh, already uh, found some interesting results during his bachelor's thesis, and he has defended his capstone. And to continue uh, his research for six more months, he has received the um, scholarship from ARCA. And uh, he continues doing his research right now in the Armenian Bioinformatics Institute. And we are also launching another program which has a bit uh, interesting format. So basically we find uh, we have a postdoctoral uh, researcher, Erika Znavurian, in this case from Harvard University. And we find a student from the Armenian Bioinformatics Institute and we um, support uh, both Eric and the student in learning uh, the bioinformatics um, expertise and skill set that is needed to accomplish uh, the project that Eric is pursuing in Harvard, but also will help the student to engage in this research and to uh, gain uh, further knowledge. We already have a couple of publications uh, with uh, the Armenian Bioinformatics uh, participation of the Armenian Bioinformatics Institute. And soon we are um, planning to open new labs. So as I have mentioned already, Professor Hans Binder and me will uh, uh, open our labs and uh, we are also planning to launch educational programs. One of them will be advanced topics in molecular biology and the other be selected topics in bioinformatics. And uh, we are right now trying to find support, uh, find funding to uh, make this happen. And uh, in the educational programs, um, we will uh, also give the opportunity for students from different universities taking the courses to also transfer their credits to their home universities. And um, this is something that is discussed uh, upon. Okay, so basically uh, right now we are in need of um, support and we are uh, welcoming all of the experts who can join the uh, ABI Talent Cloud and uh, provide their uh, time and skills and expertise and supervision of projects or conducting seminars or joining our weekly uh, seminars with Q&A sessions, etc. And of course, we are very happy for any uh, researcher to relocate to Armenia for at least some short period of time and to contribute there physically. We are looking for specialists to uh, support us in establishing the computing resources uh, for ABI. We are looking for advisors to help us in strategy planning. And of course, we are uh, looking for uh, funding sources right now. So the way we envision ABI to work is um, to uh, collect donations in the first uh, three years of its lifetime. But of course, uh, to have sustainability, we also envision that we will apply for capacity building grants as well as the research labs that operate in ABI will have the opportunity to gain more and more uh, research grants in the future. But in addition, we will also um, continue our uh, collaboration with the industry and uh, the industrial sources um, of income will also serve for ABI to continue its uh, activities. 
the initial um, in in the first year we uh, require around uh, three hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars of funding, and uh, this funding will support both the research labs, uh, all the postdoctoral and uh, student uh, graduate student researchers working in ABI, as well as uh, software engineers, equipment, and space costs, uh, travel costs, etc. So right now we already have $17,000 and the rest we are still uh, looking to get. And this is the breakdown of, uh, of, of the budget according to different sub projects that I have already described right now. And of course, uh, the ways to donate to ABI Currently, there is a way to uh, donate via direct transfer, but the card payment uh, system is coming soon. And we are also discussing with different organizations to, uh, in the US to help us also uh, collect tax deductible uh, donations from uh, people based in US. And we are planning to launch uh, several uh, um, Facebook campaigns for uh, funding the research labs as well as the renovation costs of ABI very soon. With this, I would like to uh, thank you. And um, yeah, I will be happy to take questions and also uh, the board members, uh, two of our board members, Professor Hans Binder and Professor Asena Rakelan are here as well. So we will be happy uh, to take any questions that are there. Thank you, Dr. Nersisian. That was a very insightful, interesting discussion on this very important topic. And we do have some questions. So um, let's dive into the Q&A portion of our webinar. Um, first question is, is there interest for ABI to collaborate with rare disease physicians, researchers, advocacy groups? There are many pediatric rare conditions that will benefit from diagnosis, um, data collection on the conditions and potentially repurposed drugs. Um, I would like to uh, ask uh, Professor Arsena Rakilan to take that question. Okay, well, thanks. Uh, good morning or good evening, everyone. It's I'm very glad to be here on this meeting. Thanks for ISA for organizing it. Uh, so let me briefly uh, address this particular question. Actually, we do work with uh, clinicians who uh, have a need for analyzing uh, genomic data as well as uh looking for bioinformatics expertise in field of biomarker discovery and drug repositioning to drug target discovery so we'll be we will be glad to collaborate uh for, with these uh clinicians in in the frame of abi uh abi since one of the labs specifically addresses or, or aim is focused at uh, human genomics or human pathogenomics analysis. Thank you. Thank you. Um, an attendee is first would like to say thank you for all your work and presenting this to us today. Um, is there any need to write custom data processing software platforms beyond what exists today? Would this be something that is in the scope of what you plan to tackle in the near future? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, that's actually uh, uh, in the scope of the Armenian Life Bank uh, that I um, briefly introduced. So interestingly, even though um, there are many data sets that are produced right now in Armenia, and this includes uh, data sets from different uh, organisms, including animals, plants, uh, fungi, etc. There, uh, these data sets are scattered in different uh, platforms and different databases all around the world. And there is uh, a need to collect all those data sets in one place to first be a showcase and uh, second of all to um, let people to have a very nice and interactive way of exploring uh, the data. And of course to explore the data you need to have 
uh, custom software tools. And not only to explore, but also to let uh, all uh, life science uh, labs in Armenia to interact with the data better. And um, sometimes they can use uh, available software, but sometimes you need to write custom tools for that as well. So uh, I think uh, Professor Hans Binder can also provide additional comments uh, because he also has uh, great expertise in developing such uh, tools for uh, Leipzig. Hans, would you like to take that? Yes. I just switch on the, the micro. Hello, everybody. Uh, in Leipzig, we have a similar problem since many years. A lot of data from clinical studies, uh, genomic studies on different topics. And we created a so-called Leipzig Health Atlas, where we provide uh, open source like all these data for the world, for the scientific world. And it is, how to say, an important tool nowadays everywhere because uh, people understood that data science doesn't mean only collecting data and it doesn't mean only uh, analyzing data. It, it also means, and this is very important, sharing data, sharing data between scientists for meta-analyses to make them available. So, and that's simply the goal that we want to address also at the ABI for Armenian data, but, but also for bioinformatics research done in Armenia or in collaboration with Armenia for scientific world. By the way, England soccer championat Europe one to zero. <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Binder. Uh, we have some questions on um, who's involved with uh, ABI. Um, there's a question about Nubar Afeyan. Um, is he involved? And also, how many bioinformatics specialists would be needed to allow the biotech pharma industry to flourish in Armenia? Is there any number that you could provide to us? Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks for the question. I will start with the uh, second one. Um, so basically, uh, there is, a, of course, it's very hard to count. The more the better, that's the perfect answer. But um, of course, you need at least 10, 20 specialists, senior specialists uh, for, for the field to be sustainable and uh, to, to have the infrastructure, at least to have the constant flow of students and the senior researchers will allow it to happen. And of course, if you have 20, if you have 30, then you can uh, be happy for part of these specialists to uh, go to, industry, to different industries and also to uh, contribute their skills uh, that they had learned uh, during the academic path in the industry as well. Uh, yeah, Arsene also wants to add something. No, okay. Yeah, if, if I can add to this particular question. Basically, we have to consider that at some point, inevitably genomics and, and sequencing technologies will finally come to Armenia and they will become a part of what is now routine diagnostics, at least for cancers and, and rare diseases in the rest of the world. And for this part, we basically would need at least uh, as many clinical bioinformaticians as we have hospitals that deal with these diseases. So the problem here is that now we don't have enough uh, talentful or, or human resources that will that would fulfill the upcoming need. And I know that there are at least several initiatives and and uh, like attempts to establish uh, bioinformatics related biotech companies in Armenia, and most of them. Uh, kind of fail, failed because of the lack of the resources. So I think the number of 20 to 30 will create the nucleus, which would then grow and uh, generate enough uh, specialists that will really then uh, fill the gaps in every industry and every uh, company or, or hospital where this need will, will come up. 
I would also like to add the uh, academic institutions in Armenia to the list um, because uh, according to our surveys, when we talk to specialists in different in Yerevan State University, in the Institute of Botany, in um, different institutions where have uh, they have all these data sets that they uh, gathered uh, with co in collaboration with their colleagues from uh, Europe and the US, uh, they faced the problem of not being able to analyze the data and thus not, not being able to uh, take the lead in how the project goes. And uh, this leads to uh, the problem that Armenia serves uh, basically as a source of samples uh, of, bio, of samples from uh, different biodiversity and Armenia doesn't take the, all the advantage so that doesn't take leverage that uh, opportunities that we have. Um, so this is very important to also have a bioinformatics specialist, at least one uh, specialist in all these different research institutions dealing with biomedical uh, aspects in Armenia. And uh, regarding the first question uh, about uh, Nubala Feyan, we are uh, very actively trying to engage all the people who are related with biotech uh, in uh, industry and the academic uh, fields all around the world. So we are actively um, trying to connect with them and um, any, any contribution that these experts may have in ABI is very important right now. So collaboration is the key, connections are the key to our success. And uh, I would like to take this opportunity um, to also uh, ask people if, if they can help us uh, have a connect, have um, established a connection with Barafayan. We will be very happy um, for this opportunity as well. Nada, can I jump in? Um, I think this is this is probably a right time for me to say a few words regarding this. Um, Lily, thank you for your presentation. I'm very happy to also meet Professor Hans Minder and uh, Professor Arsen Arkelian. My name is Richard Ohanian. I am the uh, president of AESA, Armenian Engineers and Scientists of, uh, of America. And um, um, I am happy to mention that we are also working on uh, similar things, at least within United States territories. Um, we, AESA is planning a bioinformatics, anything bio-related conference towards the end of this year. Professors uh, Neil Box and um, I forgot his, his wife's name, Tamara something, in uh, Colorado, um, they are collaborating with uh, their AESA members and they're also collaborating with AESA folks we're trying to put together a conference and um, um, I already asked our folks to contact Lilith and Arson to get the ball going in terms of communication with you guys. We are also actively pursuing projects uh, to fund in Armenia. I'm going to put uh, Dr. Um, Petros Kashishian, who is AESA's R&D director. He's in Armenia, he's in Yerevan, and so I'm going to connect him with you so you, you guys can talk to each other. And we are uh, basically trying to fund uh, exactly institutions and uh, you know places such as ABI, uh, because we think um, that falls within our mission statement. Uh, so please take the time and meet with them. And also, if uh, if opportunity uh, poses itself, we're going to also be uh, one of your uh, supporters, definitely. And uh, we're also generating a database of uh, Armenian uh, experts in bioinformatics, biotechnology, everything bio-related within the <clears throat> United States. So we're going to share that with you at some point once it's completed. So um, there are a lot of things that AESA is doing that is, uh, you know, synergistic with your activities and we're definitely going to collaborate more with you guys. Thank you. That's, that sounds really great. Thank you, Richard. Um, we have a question uh, for Dr. Nestisian. Computing is a core technology for your research. What type of computing resources are available in Armenia? Are they cost effective? EMBL Heidelberg has or used to have back in 2010 its own computing cluster. Um, yeah, that's a very important question. Thanks uh, for uh, raising it. Um, so currently we are using the uh, resources provided by ASNET and that uh, are maintained by the Institute for Informatics and Automation Problems. 
uh, right now the server that we have is not big, uh, but uh, it's so the hard uh, they, they are acquiring hardware resources and um, the amount of uh, space that we need. So usually uh, the space is uh, computed as um, like two to four terabytes per bioinformatician. Uh, so usually we have uh, very high storage requirements and we also have high memory requirements. And uh, these are all uh, solutions that are coming. In the near future, we will have all the necessary. Uh, we already have, like within the group, uh, with the amount of people that we have, we do have the necessary um, computing resources. But uh, as the amount of people grows, uh, the, in, uh, the resources at the Institute for Informatics will also grow accordingly. The main issue, the challenge that uh, we um, uh, hope we are working towards uh, solving is to have the software solutions in place as well, to have all the uh, bioinformatics software and databases in sync uh, updated and available for all, uh, all the users. And uh, this is something that we have uh, great experience both working in Germany, working in Sweden, and um, we are all as bioinformaticians very familiar with how smooth the work with bioinformatics uh, is going when you have all these software solutions in place and all the IT support in place. So we are now looking for an IT specialist uh, that will help us in this because we think this is a core uh, to, uh, for ABI success. And yeah, we are working towards that. Um, we, we have another connection recommendation, uh, Fast Next Gen who they have many experts all around the world and they focus on this topic. Um, they were wondering how connected you are to them. Um, yeah, thanks uh, for that question as well. Um, so I personally have been uh, the first, one of the first members of uh, Fast Next Gen Console. So uh, I took that uh, opportunity to get connected with uh, all the people uh, in uh, Fast as well as in the Next Gen uh, Console. And um, yeah, I actually, uh, with a couple of people that were in the next uh, gen console, we are still collaborating as well in the frames of uh, the Armenian Bioinformatics Institute. And yeah, uh, different topics, uh, different topics uh, were discussed with FAST. And particularly, um, there is one, uh, one project that FAST has implemented, the Advanced uh, Grant Project. Uh, these are projects with very nice format where uh, one of uh, so they form groups where uh, the supervisor is um, abroad, so he's remotely supervising a group uh, of uh, Armenians, postdocs, and uh, as well as PhD students in Armenia. And there are several projects uh, in ABI that are very well fitted uh, within the format of this advanced grant. So we have uh, discussed this with us, and uh, whenever they have funding, uh, they um, agreed to support us in that as well. But it depends, of course, on uh, the funding resources that they um, can uh, get. Thank you. Um, that concludes all the questions we have. Uh, we still have some time. If anyone has any questions, please submit them into the chat and we'll get to them. Um, at the moment, I believe we've pretty much gone through all the questions. So I'd like to conclude the webinar. Um, thank you, Dr. Narcissian, for joining us today. We know it's uh, evening for you and weekend, so we really appreciate and are grateful that you were able to present this uh, insightful webinar today. And thank you to the audience members for joining us. Um, I'd like to let everyone know that we are looking for members to get more involved with our monthly lectures and webinars, as well as to provide any feedback on what kind of content you would like to see in future webinars. If you know of any speakers you would like to recommend, feel free to contact us. Or if you would like to moderate any of these webinars, uh, feel free to contact us at contacts at AESA.org. We're open to all of your feedback, um, suggestions, and involvement as well. We also have numerous committees that members can be active in. So if you would like to start being more active, get uh, organizing projects and different programs that we have, um, again, that email contact at asa.org. And also we were trying to figure out the best time for these webinars as 
I mentioned before, we have speakers that are from different time zones. Feel free to give us your feedback and let us know what works best for you, what kind of content you'd like to see in future webinars, and we would love to hear more from all of you. So with that, we'd like uh, to conclude if I, the... If I may uh, add a few words, again, I would like to thank the audience for joining this I'm sure not very convenient time and 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 spending this time with us. Uh, I really appreciate it. And I think that's, that's what ISA doing is a really great and uh, great job and it will succeed. Just using this opportunity, I would like to ask if you uh, may also consider contributing to expertise or reviewing the applications that are submitted to State Committee of Science in Armenia. The we, in Armenia, we have constant shortage of reviewers for the grant applications for national uh, competitions. And since we uh, submit our proposals in, in two languages, Armenian and English, it would be more or less uh, I think the audience here would, can serve as a very good uh, platform for uh, evaluating these applications and helping state committee to distribute uh, proposed grants uh, according to their merit. And uh, if you agree, I can share with you the contacts for uh, head of state committee of sciences as well as his deputy. So we can, you can discuss the opportunities of how ASA can contribute to uh, improving the quality of uh, peer review of grant applications in Armenia. Thank you. I would, also, I would also like to uh, thank all, all the participants uh, and I was very happy to uh, introduce uh, our initiative and uh, I was particularly excited by Richard's comment about uh, all these um, uh, experts that uh, you are connected to, and I hope that uh, yeah we will have uh, further uh, connections to uh, discuss how we can uh, collaborate in this uh, as well. So thanks a lot, thanks a lot for inviting and for having us here. Thank you, and I'd also like to thank Dr. Binder and Dr. Arakelian for sharing your thoughts as well and joining us. Um, with that, we'd like to conclude the webinar. This webinar was recorded, so we will be emailing all of our members with the link to the recording. Uh, for those that were not able to join us, I know there was an exciting um, a sports event today, but they will be able to watch the recording and feel free to um, watch, you know, you can rewatch that again. If you have any questions, Dr. Nesisian did submit her, um, her email, which I will, post into the chat and you can contact her via email for any inquiries. And so thank you all for joining us and have a great weekend. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.